So size from Instruo is basically an envelope generator, but it has a few features that are very useful when building generative patches. First of all, it has a trigger output that will output a trigger with each of the stages. So it will output a trigger when in the attack stage, another trigger when in the decay stage and so on. Another interesting feature is the fact that each stage has a CV input so we can modulate and change each of the stages over time. Another super useful feature is the gate output of each of the stages. So for example, as long as the envelope is in its um, attack stage, a gate will come out of the respective output and will stay open until the attack stage is over. The same with the other stages, of course. So let's really start something from scratch. All I have here is a mixer and I have reverb, I have plateau as a send effect. I have also the MB module from Sturmelder, so I can find things easily in the browser. And I will use color coding, um, so it's easier to follow. Um, red cables will be audio, um, blue cables, clocks, triggers, and gates, yellow cables, volt per octave, and green cables, modulation. So let's try and build something generative, focusing on size. And most of what we will look at today will work also in hardware. Okay, first of all, something I like doing is generating sort of random triggers with using a looping function. So here I have the AD envelope from Nischi. Let's set it to loop. So I will activate looping and trigger it once and you can see it's looping. I can also show you this on the scope. So this will be our looping function. And now I will use sample and hold. I will use the one from Bog Audio. In this case, in the right click menu, we can change the different ranges. So I will go with zero to positive five volts. If you're using a sample and hold that has no uh, range settings, then you can always use an attenuator to attenuate the signal. Let's trigger the sample and hold with the end of cycle output of the looping function. Um, by the way, this upper gate input is normal to the lower one, so there is no need to connect another cable to the lower section. And now we will use this sample and hold to modulate the attack and decay times of the envelope, something like this. So we have sort of feedback modulation. And with each of the cycle, each of the cycles of the AD envelope, we will get different envelope times or function times as you can see here and then we will also get a sort of a random trigger from the uh, end of cycle output so let's use it to trigger size just like this and now with each of the cycles we will also get um, size triggered and now actually, you know, we can take this even a step further by adding more probability to this trigger with the Bernoulli gate. So I will use chances from count modula. I will send a trigger to the input of, of uh, chances and from there it will go to trigger size. And now not only that we have sort of random triggers, there's also a 50% chance that it will actually trigger size. I have it here set to the center, which means 50% that it will come out of output A. Let's also have a look on the scope, how size looks like, when it will be triggered, of course, just like this, you can see here. So now a nice feature of chances is latch mode. We can say, uh, set it with the switch here, which will output a gate that will stay high as long as the trigger is coming out of output A in this case. So now it's coming out of B, now it will come out of A and you can see the gate stays up as long as it will come out of A. So now we can change size to work with gates rather than with triggers and we can take advantage of the sustain stage of size as well. Okay, now let's start already adding some voices. So we will start with the TSL, also from um, Instruo. And we will mix a few waveforms with the mixer from VCV. So let's go with the pulse output, maybe with the fold. We will take the sub oscillator one octave down and use it as well. And also maybe the triangle, let's say, 
and let's add oct also in Struo to add some movement to everything. So let's make it a bit slower and use one LFO to modulate the pulse width of the pulse wave. Maybe slower ones, another one to modulate the folding of the fold wave. Um, I will also use a filter after the mixer just to have more control on the brightness or the color of the sound. So let's do send this, take the levels a bit down, send this to the mixer, uh, send this to the filter, from the mixer to the filter, and from the filter to the mixer. So already we have, we have sound. And let's use Oct also to control the levels of the mixer. Now I know Oct is bipolar, but it will work just fine for now. So let's do something like this. I can also always use the individual levels here to bring it up a bit, even though the modulation is bipolar. Let's also modulate the filter, let's say with this one here. There's lots and lots of movement. And now we will use size this envelope you see here on the scope to open and close this mixer with the CV output, of course. So now there is no sound. And when size will be triggered or gated in this case, we will get sound. Of course, let's add some reverb to this, something like this. Oh yeah. Let's wait for it one more time. Very nice. Okay, so now let's add a few more elements. So first of all, we will use the sample and hold module from uh, Mokba or Moskva. This sample and hold is perfect, not only, but perfect for generative patches. Since it has a clock divider for each of the channels, and it has also probability control, so we can add another layer of uh, complexity. So let's use the end of cycle output to trigger the common trigger input. So all of the sample and holds, all of the different sample and holds here will be triggered with this end of cycle trigger. And let's use Harmonig. We will start with Harmonig, so we can add also pitch information. So we will use the first sample and hold. Pitch information is yellow in this case. Let's set a scale. For now, everything is on. I will turn a few off. I will leave D on, F, A, and B flat. So we have four notes. Let's send the uh, root output to the oscillator, to the one, vo uh, one volt per octave input of the oscillator. And let's open the attenuator a bit. So now we will get also pitch information. And let's actually change the range here of the sample and hold. So I will set the negative voltage to zero. So we have zero to five volts. Um, of course, we have an attenuator here, but I don't want the, this oscillator to go too low. So it will have, it will receive only positive voltages. And now, before we start modulating the different stages of size, let's add some delay to this. So we will use the Chronoblob 2 from Alright Devices, which is also available as hardware. And I don't want this voice um, to go always to the delay, so we will use a VCA. Again, I will use the one from VCV. And to open this VCA, we will use, for example, the Decay the decay, I will use the green cable because it's modulation and not gate. I will use the uh, decay gate output. And I hope you can see this here, here it was, it happened now. And um, this gate is a bit too sharp to, for modulating this VCA. So what we can do, we can use another AD envelope, another one from Nischi. And now we will use this as a gate to trigger or as a trigger to trigger this envelope. 
and this will control the VCA and we will set a nice long attack. So now the modulation, the VCA will open smoothly. Let's wait for it, just like this. And you know what, also here let's add some probability with another chances, so it will not be always going to the delay, but they will have again, there will be again 50% chance that it will actually open the VCA. And now let's send a copy of this voice from the filter to the VCA, from the VCA this will go to the delay, and let's send this already to the mixer, we'll have a stereo signal in this case. Now the delay we will set to 100% wet, because we have already the original sound, here we only want the delayed sound. Let's set a ping pong delay, and change the delay times, something like this, and of course add a nice amount of uh, feedback, maybe about 90%. And a nice amount of reverb as well, this is channel 2. You can hear the delayed signal. Just like this. Okay, another thing we can do is use um, the other output of this chances module. <clears throat> sorry, output B to trigger two more sample and holds, one and two. Here we have the individual trigger inputs. Let's add some probability to them and use them to modulate the delay times of Chronoblob. So after each time the VCA is opening, we will get a different delay time or we'll get different delay times for the left and for the right channel. Let's listen to this a bit. Let's wait for the delay. Again, according to chances, there is a chance that it will be open or not. And I can change this probability. Silence. <laughs> this is also a part of generative patches, silence. But let's wait for it. Let's wait for it to be triggered again. Just like this. Okay, so now we can start modulating the stages of size. So we will use the sample and hold for this with probability and clock divisions. So let's set four sample and holds to have only positive um, voltages. So let's say zero to positive seven, something around seven volts. Each one of them will be a bit different, which is always nice. Something like this. And let's change the probability take it a bit down and let's add the clock divisions for two of them so this will be divided by two another one will be divided by three let's say and we will use them to modulate the stages of size so one will go to the attack decay sustain and release and let's change here also the settings a bit so now we are also changing the envelope of size, the stages of size, we have more movement. Very nice. And now we can use the attack stage gate output to bring in another voice. So let's use, I will put this here for a second, let's use Basil from Vult, and I will use Athru 
also from Instruo, which is a wave folder, but can also be used as a sort of a VCA. So let's use Bazel, send it through Astro, and this will go to the mixer. Let's also rename the channels. So the first one will be TSL, just so we know what is what. The second one will be Delay. The third one will be Bazel. Okay, very nice. Okay, now we will use the fifth output of Harmonig to sequence this basal. You can also listen to this a bit. Let's actually take it an octave up. And now what we will do, we'll use a slew limiter and use the attack gate output to bring in this voice through the slew limiter. So the gate will uh, turn into something smoother. Again, I will use a green cable because it's modulation through the slew limiter, maybe a bit more rise and fall. And open the attenuverter here a bit. Maybe you know what, we have to take this down just a bit. So this was basal. Again, the, as long as it's in the attack stage, if the attack is long enough, it will open us through enough for the voice to go through. Just like it did now. And you know what we will do? Let's send this through a 100% wet reverb. So what I will do, we'll use plateau, take the drive all the way down, maybe take the low frequencies a bit down, add some decay, add just, add just a bit of modulation wet all the way up already i will take the volume even more down because this can get quite crazy and i will send this voice first through the 100 percent wet reverb the dry signal doesn't go through at all and let's wait for it let's see if it happens Again, only if the attack stage of size is long enough, this voice will come in. Let's wait for it. Okay, now this voice needs some dirt, so I'm going to use the Briatus, and I'm going to take this level, the level of this voice even down, more down, maybe negative 20, maybe take it even here a bit down. Now the Briatus, I will not change anything, just by going through the Briatus in this case, because the levels, the, the um, output gain here is so high, it will already add crunch to the sound, so there is no need even to change the Briatus in any way. Let's just wait for it, see if the levels are not too high on the mixer. It will be nice and crunchy. This was nice. Let's wait for it one more time. This was too short. Just it for now. Let's do it something like this. Oh yeah. So this was. You can hear it. Maybe I can take the levels a bit up and add even more reverb here after the fact. So we have a nice crunchy voice. And let's add another element with recording the main voice after the delay. So I will use the complex simpler from Nischi. I will use the voice after the delay. And for now, let's do something like this. I want to start with silence and end with silence. So I will make sure the delay is not being triggered. Take the feedback all the way down. 
and I will start recording, take the feedback up, and make sure that the delay will be triggered. I just want one, one time of the delay to come in. And that's it. Now let's wait for it a bit. It's recording. Let's take the feedback a bit down so it fades out. Now I can stop the recording, let's bring everything like it was. And let's have a listen to this. So this is the sample, the recording we set. We recorded, let's set it to play in reverse. If I hit negative one here on the speed, maybe also an octave, an octave down. Let's make it start here somewhere, so it's not too much silence. And let's add also a healthy amount of reverb. We will call this sample. Already I feel relaxed. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is now this sample, this bass voice. String-like voice. very nice and um, by the way I will also save the sample of course if you want to use the patch and um, so it will load with the sample now let's add a nice changing up this will be a bit complicated and um, but I will try to make it slowly so first of all we will use an FM operator now I will not do any FM here not to make this even more complex but the FM operator does have a built-in envelope that we can use so let's activate the envelope for the level and set a nice percussive envelope no attack and no sustain or a short attack and no sustain i will use a sequential switch i will use the one from vcv um, this will switch between the notes and the notes we will use this will arpeggiate the notes the notes we will use will come from harmonic one two three and four. So we have four um, notes. I will also use um, an LFO, in this case the LLFO from Bog Audio as a square wave to trigger the switch. You can see that it's switching going note by note, arpeggiating this chord. Now Let's send this to the FM operator and the FM operator I will already send to the mixer and I will call it FM op. Okay, now if I connect the LFO also to the gate of the FM operator. We get the arpeggio. Now what I want is to bring this voice in and out with the sustain gate output of size. So let's use another VCA. And I will send the FM operator through this VCA. We will use another slew limiter just like we've, uh, we did before. This will go to the VCA. And let's connect the LFO again to the input to the gate input of uh, the FM operator and let's use the sustain again it will be a green cable the sustain through the the sustain gate output through the slew limiter just like this so it will bring the voice in and out maybe a bit more Now we will use the same sustain output to trigger another sample and hold F here, another one. And this will change the rate of the LFO. So let's change the range here to about one volt. 
more or less, and this will go to the volt per octave input. Now I'm not controlling pitch here, so I'm using a green cable, I'm just modulating the rate, the frequency. So now the rate of the LFO will change. Let's add lots and lots of reverb in this case, take the level down maybe to about negative 10, and add lots and lots of reverb here. So it's nice and smeared. Let's listen to this a bit. Actually, we can also use Oct to modulate the panning of this voice, and also the feedback amount of this FM operator. just to change the brightness of the sound here and there. Very nice. Let's listen to this a bit. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Okay, now no patch is complete without carpless strong frogs. <laughs> So let's use white noise, I will use the noise module from Bog Audio, it has all sorts of noise types, I will use the white noise, and I will use another VCA, and also another tangents filter from Vult, because I want a band pass filter, so this will go to the band pass input, and I want another AD envelope from Nischi, set a nice short envelope, so the filter will go, from the filter the white noise will go to the VCA and this envelope will control the levels of this VCA and I will use also a delay, a short delay or a long delay, we will modulate it with lots and lots of feedback so this will go to the delay and let's send this to oh, a red cable to the mixer, this we will, will call frog <laughs> And now I can trigger manually the envelope and uh, yeah the envelope and see how it will sound like. Add some resonance. Yes. Maybe a bit more. A bit more feedback. Okay, now we will use the trigger output, the main trigger output that will output a trigger with each of the stages. The main trigger output of size or SACE, we will use it to trigger this envelope. So with each of the stages we will get this carpal strong sound voice. And let's modulate the delay time and the filter with smooth random voltage. I will use two walk uh, modules from Bog Audio. I can show you also on the scope exactly how they will look like. So this will be one, this is the blue trace. And another one, this will be the pink trace. Smooth random voltage. One will modulate the filter, again a bandpass filter with lots and lots of resonance, not so much, but not enough. And another one will modulate the time, now there is no uh, attenuator or attenuverter here, so I can take the scale of this all the way down for now, connect it to the time, and raise the scale a bit, so this is my attenuator in this case. Depending modulation again with Oct. Oh, yeah.
So we got a really nice patch. And actually I have um, homework for you, something I want you to explore. We still have the release gate output of size. And I want you to try and add a bass voice using this output, using this gate. Um, if you create something, be sure to tag me, to share it with me. Uh, I would love to hear your results. And that was it. That was it. That was it. Maybe it's a hit also. <laughs> But that was it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will let the music run a bit more so we can enjoy it a bit and relax with it. Um, thank you for watching and cheers.